Hello everyone, welcome again to Mike's SAS Tutorials. I hope you've enjoyed the previous three tutorials on the SAS environment, creating new data sets, and importing previously created data sets. I'm going to try to continue to upload as uh, many videos as I can as often as possible. With the PhD schedule, it's kind of tough. Uh, my very sincerest thank you, by the way, to those of you who followed along so far, especially those of you who have subscribed to my channel and who have commented on the video so far. I'm glad these videos are helpful. I hope they continue to be. I'll try my best to create uh, succinct videos that are effective and teach you any programs in SAS for your needs. That being said, let's get started. Today we're going to cover how to merge two or more data sets using different methods. Uh, we're going to start in SAS as usual, and we're going to start with our data main. Remember data main is that one with three variables, x, y, and z, and two observations. That values 1, 2, 3, and 79 for our variables. And we're going to add a new data here, a new data set, called more people and it's going to have the exact same number of variables but now it's going to have two new records two new observations um, we want to combine this with our previous main data set and create a final data set the way we can do this is using a single set statement in a data step so if we create a new data step let's call it a one set final and then we're going to set main as previous and add in this new more people data set. When we run this code, what's going to happen is SAS is going to bring in the variable structure from our data main, x, y, and z, and it's going to bring in the two values or the two observations for those x, y, and z variables, and then it's going to bring in the variable values from the new data set without looking at the data structure for the next data set. So when we run all of this code, let's select it, hit F8, we can see through our proc print on one set final what this data set will look like. If I run this now, you'll see that the first two observations correspond to that which we had before in our data main. But now we have two new observations from our more people data set. It's very simple, very straightforward, um, very easy to do, and it requires only one set statement. Now you might be asking yourself, well, what if I need to use two set statements? Well, you do need to use two set statements if you have a different variables but the same observations. So let's say these two uh, records here correspond to the same two records from our data set main, but now we have three new variables, let's call them A, B, and C, in this new data set called more variables. More variables. Now I'm going to just run that real quick and bring it in. And like before, we're going to create a new data step. Let's call it two, two set final. And we're going to set main. This will bring in the data structure and uh, values from our main data set and then we're going to bring in more vars using a second st set statement and that'll bring in the variable structure from more vars as well as the values for the two records. When I run this now it's going to uh, be a complete data set with only two observations and six variables. Let's call our proc print so we can see what it looks like and you can see here it's exactly as it should be two observations the uh, first three variables from our data set main and the three variables from our data set more variables and all the corresponding values so that is using two set statements to merge two data sets remember when you have two uh, data sets that have different number of variables but the same observations, use two set statements. And when you have the same variables but different observations, you'll want to use one set statement. Now there's another way using uh, the merge statement, again being used in the data step, when you have a common index variable. Now an index variable is something like an identification variable that's going to identify unique records, unique patients, people, machines, whatever the case may be, um, for your data. 
So here we're going to have another data set that we're going to import into main called more variables and people. It's going to have those A, B, and C variables. But now we're going to use X as a pseudo ID variable. So we would do data, let's call it merged final. And we would use this merge statement to bring in main and more vars and people data set. If I ran this as it was, I would get an error. Why? Well, actually, it might not even give you an error. It might go through, but it's not going to be correct. The reason is you need to have this by x. When you use this by statement, it tells it to merge the two data sets using x as the common index variable. However, before you do even that, you need to do uh, two procedures, a proc sort on your main data set, by the x variable and a proc sort on your more vars and people data sets again by x and you would run that now you might be asking yourself why did I omit this uh, run statement below the first proc well when you have two or more procedures that are going to be run often as a group you can omit the runs in between as long as you make sure that whenever they're run they're run together because if I ran this code right here for the proc sort by itself it would never get registered until SAS saw another run statement wherever it might be but if I'm going to run these all the time as a pair these two proc sorts on my main and my more vars and people data sets then I can omit the run in between and just make sure to run them as a group so if I select I'm just going to select this as well. If I select these two procs all the time and I hit my running man, they will always run together. And you can see here, even though there wasn't that run statement, the first proc ran, proc sort data on main by x, input data set is already sorted, well that's because I ran it before, and then proc sort data more vars and people by x run import, uh, or sorry, input data set is already sorted. So it's saying that it's already sorted only because I previously ran it. But in your first run, it'll say sorting by X and everything's gravy. So now when I run my data merged final and I merge, it's going to merge it on X as the common identification variable. So I can select this, hit my running man, and then see what it looks like using proc print. And of course the log says everything is good. And if we go to our output, we can see what it looks like. So here you could see the first observation had the x uh, equals 1, and then all the values for y and z, as well as the new values for a, b, and c variables. And then over here on our fourth observation where x equals 7, we can see our 8, 9 for y and z, and our 10, 20, and 30 for a, b, and c. But you're going to ask yourself, or you should be asking yourself, why are these two uh, uh, observations in between have these little dots here for Y and Z? Well, a dot is the way that SAS stores missing data, and it will, st it will store the dot to indicate that no data was there present. And when you want to um, look at your data here, we can look at it in our Explorer, our Merged Final, we can see that the dots there indicate like there's nothing there it's missing values for Y and Z well why is it missing those values it's missing those values because our original data set did not have an X equals 2 or X equals 3 uh, ID for that particular record but the new data set had these X equals 2 and X equals 3 observations as well as ABC values and so there are no x or there are no y z values and therefore they're missing and so you can see that right here that's the case now of course it's sorted one two three seven those are our x values our id values and so the one from our original main that had y and z values is at the very end so that's just a simple way to use the merge statement to merge two or more data sets. But remember, this is uh, contingent on using that identification variable as a common index variable. So if you don't have an ID variable, it would probably not be in your best interest to use this method. The last way we're going to uh, cover is a little bit trickier. It's uh, using SQL. It's uh, SQL is a, a
very simple using what we call a left join um, and you'll if you do like a Google search or just search on the internet you'll find there are a lot of different join types when you're using SQL language to merge databases and they can be a little bit tricky to do but I'm gonna give you a, a pretty simple example of how to use proc SQL to do a left join so if I type in here proc SQL I'm going to end the statement right there. I'm not going to say data equals in this particular proc because this is going to be independent of any data uh, set. It's not going to be run on the data set. Uh, create table as, let's call it SQL final. Oops. Create table SQL final as select L dot star comma R dot star and just bear with me here and continue to code from main as L left join uh, more vars and people as R on L dot X equals R dot X quit so again remember that SQL is a little bit more advanced so the rules are a little bit different but it still reads the same way you would read any uh, procedure in SAS as a single sentence so here we're going to create a table. A table is a SQL word for a data set. We're going to create a data set called SQL Final, where we select everything from the left and everything from the right, where the left is our main data set and the right is our more vars and people data set. And we're going to do it on a left join. A left join just means that we're going to import the data structure from the main side and we're going to use this on left dot x equals r dot x in other words the x variable from our left data set main must equal the x variable in our right data set more vars and people that's our common index variable now when you use proc sql you have to make sure that you're using a common uh, index variable and id variable when you're merging them in this way because if you don't uh, SQL won't know how you want to import your values. The thing you have to make sure when you uh, use proc SQL is that you are doing it in a way uh, that you are sorry that you are making sure to specify the left join. When you specify the left join, it's saying that we're going to make sure that our main data set is completely included in our final data set and only those variables or values in the new data set where uh, we have observations in our original data set are included. I know that's a little tricky. It will make a lot more sense if you see what it looks like. And you're going to see here there were two observations, the first and the second, and all the variables from our original main data set and all the new variables and values from our second data set, more vars and people. So when you use this left join, you're saying that the data structure in main, our left side, is most important. And all the values must be included from our original data set. You'll notice that the values for um, our, our last two observations, our observations uh, 2 and 3, were excluded because they were not originally included in our main data set. And so therefore they're not in there. Uh, I'll try to create a new a tutorial on SQL language a little bit later on. It's, like I said, a little bit more advanced, but it's just a simple way to, if you want to import in this way or merge in this way two different data sets, you can do so. It's um, a little bit more preferable to use the SQL language to merge data sets because SQL is a little bit easier on resources within SAS. And so if you have really large data sets on the order of like 10 million or something, 20 million, it will do it a lot faster than if you were to set or if you were to merge. And so SQL is useful in that language. SQL is also used a lot in other database management systems like Microsoft Access or Apache. And so you'll want to know how to use SQL if you get into uh, database management a little bit more in depth. And it will probably become... Uh, a necessity. For the most part this is just a very simple tutorial, a very simple example, and so you can see how to do a very simple um, 
data merge using ProxySQL within SAS. And one last thing, this quit instead of run is uh, unique to ProxySQL in this example. So make sure not to include run. If you if you told it to run, it would just ignore it. Uh, using quit, make sure that you completely close the procedure when you're done with it so that no errors come along later in your code. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I'll try to bring in a new tutorial very soon. In the next tutorial, I'll talk about uh, data reduction or subsetting data sets and discuss how you can use um, different keep, drop, or rename statements to uh, keep or drop or rename variables within a data set. So if you had like this more people and you wanted to rename x to id and drop y and make sure that you kept id and z, you could do so. And as well as use data reduction using if statements to make sure that, for example, uh, any values above one are not included in our main data set, you can do that. Uh, I'll include more examples and more information next time, so please tune in, subscribe if you like, and thank you. Have a nice day.